in this video, we're going to look at bar bending schedules. So bar scheduling is the operation of listing the location, bar mark, steel type and size, number of and bending details of each reinforcement bar. So this could be in a beam or any, any type of concrete actually element, beam, floor, slabs, wall, whatever. So for cutting and bending purposes, schedules are provided as separate A4 sheets and should not be included as part of the detailed drawing. So we'll be doing the drawing later on and then you'll be submitting a separate A4 sheet with this schedule on it. So it's usually checked by or used by the following people like so a detailer, a checker, a contractor, fabricator, steel fixer, for example, or quantity surveyors. Um, reinforcement suppliers tend to prepare separate lists using the schedule as a basis. It is on these lists referred to as cutting and bending lists that the bars are sorted into the delivery batches by type, size and length and length. Bundles of cut bars must be labeled given the schedule reference and bar mark as shown opposite here in the as, as shown in the calculate exercise you did last week. So schedules should have a simple consecutive reference number and should be cross-referenced. So we're going to come to that in a bit more detail next. So to complete a bar bending schedule, there's a few little quick steps to summarize. So you have to calculate the cut length of the bar within the beam. And each bar type has a specific formula to calculate, which we'll look at later on. That's kind of based on its shape code. Then you'll also actually have to calculate the weight of the bar in kilograms per meter and record how many of each bar are in the concrete. So we'll look at that in a second. Again, just a bit of background information on reinforcement. So as you can see here on the top right of the screen, this is this kind of a lens of rebar. It looks fairly big rebar, but usually rebar is available in a number of different diameters. You can see here on screen. So from six mil all the way up to 40 mil. So it can kind of vary in size quite a lot. And the standard length that you would buy it in would be 12 meter lengths. So a bit of background information on some terminology. So we're going to look at the main bar. So the main bar in reinforced concrete structure is the reinforcement that's provided in the direction of which the moment is high or dominates. So if you look at this diagram here, so we have a simple beam supported at either end. So obviously if we apply low down the middle of it, it's going to bend. So obviously the moment is going to be highest in the bottom. So that's why we have the bar going along the bottom here. And this bar is going to be acting in tension. And so it's going to be the main bar to kind of help the beam from deforming. So again, as stated here, it's normally the bottom of the beam in the slab. Usually it's a higher dia diameter than the bar bars at the top, but sometimes it could be the same. Um, and it's used to transfer the bending moments to the, to the beam. So, you know, it just helps to keep things together. Without one of these bars, you're liable to get cracks and even failure. Um, another bit of background information is overlapping. So we can see here, if the rebar is too short or if the length is required is too great for what the bar have, we can actually overlap two bars. So there's a specific way you can do this and you have to take account of this when you're actually doing this. So again, this would happen in columns and beams where they're where quite long lengths. Remember our standard length is 12 meters. So it would be quite common on site to see bars overlapping. And again, in certain cases, when we're doing bar bending schedules later on and calculating the length of bars, you'd have to take account of this overlap. Another very, very important thing in engineering when, when you're working with concrete is concrete cover. So there's two different types. There's effective cover and nominal cover, which you can see here. So, it's, it's basically the distance between the outer surface of the concrete to the internal reinforcement. So the effective cover is from the outer surface to, this, to the center point of the rebar, as you can see here on screen, whereas the nominal cover is actually from the surface of the concrete to just where the surface of the rebar is. So, you know, they're, they're, they're slightly different. So when you're talking about co cover, make sure you understand which one you're actually talking about. So examples of covering here. So is footing cover could be 75 mil, beam could be 25 to 50 mil. That's all well and good, but we need to know exactly what they are. Is that effective cover or nominal cover? So, you know, when you're talking about cover, you really, really need to know which one is which. And um, well, next we're going to look at spacing. So again, straightforward enough. There's a distance between re reinforcement bars. So this is the quick sketch that was done up. So, you know, say this is your ground here and this is your reinforcement bars going up. It's just basically the distance between the bars. So this could be vertical or horizontal distance. In this case, it's, it's vertical reinforcement. Um, also, in some cases, you actually might not, you, have, you might have to calculate the number of bars. So again, this is going to where you're going to be using information that's, that's been specified by the engineer. So, for example, a quick calculation, how you can do that. So the number of bars is equal to the span divided by the spacing. So the span it would be specified in your drawing, which you're going to see later on, as well as the spacing. So an example here, if we've been given a five meter beam and there's a spacing of 250 mil, so 250 mil between the bars, we can actually work out the number of bars required by just basically dividing the five meters by 250, so we convert to millimeters, and then we add one, and that gives us 21 bars. So it's a straightforward enough calculation. So the maths involved here isn't, aren't complicated at all. It's generally just, you know, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division maybe, but you know, it's just get, finding the right numbers to put in the right part of the formulas with the 
bit that takes a bit more concentration. Um, another thing in beams is stirrups. So these are these links here. They're kind of like links or stirrups. So this is the, we can actually calculate the number of these required. So again, it's a similar formula as last time. So it's the actual length of the beam or column divided by the spacing plus one. So same as, similar to the last one. So again, quick calculation. If we've got a length of five meters and our spacing is 250 mil, we can just trap this in. So we turn the five meters into millimeters. Oops, sorry. And then we divide it by the 250, add one, and we get 21. So in a beam like this, that's five meters with a spacing of 250, you will require 21 stirrups to hold it together. And uh, bend reduction. So a lot of bars, when you see steel bars, we see it, these are typical bends that you see in steel bars. So when we actually bend the bar, obviously it's going to take, have an effect in terms of the length of the bar, but because, because it's actually curving a little bit, you have to take account of that little change. So, you know, there's different calculations. So if you've got a 45 degree bend, you actually have to take account of, it's called 1D, where D is diameter. So it's just basically one multiplied by the diameter. If you've got a 90 degree bend, it's two multiplied by the diameter. And it's, if, it's if it's 135, it's three multiplied by the, by the diameter. So if you had a length that's five meters long and you wanted to take account of a bend in it, you, you just see what angle the bend is at and then take away, you know, if it's 90 degrees, take away two by the diameter. So it's only a very small adjustment, but you know, it's something you have to, take, have to be aware of and take account of. So this is a very, very important part here. Now this is bar labels. So each bar in the drawing is identified by the following standard labeling sequence. So, and, and if the parameters pitch and or bar location are required, they may be omitted. So, but first of all, we usually start with the number of bars, the type of steel, the bar size, the bar mark, and then if it's required, like for a slab, you put in the bar pitch and the bar location. But we're gonna be working on a beam today, so we can leave out the pitch and location. So when you look at a structural engineering detailed drawing, you're always gonna see these little arrows coming up from the rebar. And there's always a number like this where it has a, a number, a letter, a number, a dash. So this is explaining what it is. So if you see a 2H12-15, what this actually means is that it's gonna be, in this case, along the top here, it's actually saying there's gonna be two bars. So we can only see this view in a kind of a, a side elevation section view of the side. So it's not very clear, but this way, that's where we can actually use the, the bar label to tell us what there is. So even though we can only see one bar, the label is saying there's actually gonna be two bars. So this is actually where we have to take account of the section view over here. So we can see, go straight across here, there actually is two bars, just that they're kind of in line with us, so we can't see it. So along the top here, we have two bars. So the next one is the H, so this is the type of steel. So there's different types of steel, but in this case, we're using the H, H steel. So there's a special table in the British standards, and I think it's BS8666 or something like that for the for bar schedule. but. It, the reference is there, but we're using the H type steel. The next, the number 12 then actually is the bar size. That's actually the diameter of the bar. So in this case, it's actually a 12 mil bar. So that's what the 12 stands for. And here we got one five is actually 15. So that's the bar mark. So later on when we actually list our, we, we put all this information in a bar schedule. What we're actually going to do, we're going to list all the bar, all the groups of bars in you know, numerical order. So bar mark 15 is basically just the 15th bar on the list that we're going to go for. So. That's all this is. So it just means that basically if you have your schedule, your list, which we'll see later on, a table confirming up with all the details, you'll see this is bar mark 15. You can just go down to the 15th bar mark and you'll get all the details as you go across the table. So in this case here, you'll see, again, just mentioned before, so bar lines are in line, so you cannot be seen in elevation. So make sure you check the section for full view. So you'll see here, we've actually got, it says there's two H20s and the bar mark 11. So we go up here, there's your two H20s, but they're inside. So when you look at your section view, you'll see there's actually a tree bar across, there's tree bars along the bottom. So obviously an extra bar there to help with the bending. So in this case, you actually have from the leader going up to the bar, you'll see another one coming down here where it actually has one H20. So that means it's actually one bar with H style steel and it's 20 mil diameter and it's bar mark 12. And then if you look at the section, you'll see here, these are your two um, these are your two H2011s on either side here and here and then our our single H20 which is bar mark 12 is in the middle here so again you also have to kind of take into the two drawings when you're looking at them so just by actually looking at if you know how to read a bar label then when you look at a structural detailing drawing you'll be able to actually extract that information into a schedule and just make sure everything is correct because you want that schedule to be correct when it sends out to the fabricators Otherwise, the steel that arrives on site is going to be incorrect, and then you're, that's going to affect everything. It's going to affect the slow down the site. It's going to affect your calculations. So it's a, it's a big deal. So you want to know what the labels are, what they mean, and then make sure the information recorded later on is correct. 
Um, another one here is actually bar tags. So again, we have a little example here. So in addition to the label sequence on a bar, it is necessary to indicate where the bar begins and ends. So this is achieved by inserting a bar mark in line with the bar extremity together with a fixing dimension if necessary. So we can see this here. This is our little tag in our fixing dimension. So this is called tagging. So some tagging procedures are unique to specific elements, so like slabs, staircase, etc. And these will be dealt with in the topics later on and if, 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 we, if we have to cover them. So you can see here, this is kind of what you are. We have the, the bar tags highlighted here and we have our dimension here. So it's just another bit of information you'll see on the drawing. So just to explain what they are. Okay, so what we're going to do now is a task. We're just going to go over the task for the next two weeks. So if you're not too sure what the previous information was went over, just have a quick look over it again. You know, as you work through the example, you'll see it a bit more. So, so for this week, actually the next time we're going to do is actually it's a two week assignment. So we're going to have one part of it this week and another part next week, and they're both going to be submitted together. So this week we're going to reproduce a structural detailing drawing and then complete a bar bending schedule. And then next week, we're going to draw an isometric view of the beam itself. So again, we'll, get, we'll worry about the isometric view next week, but this week we're just going to work on the structural detail drawing. And then I'll work through a bar bending schedule for you. So here's what the final drawing we're going to be, you're, you guys are going to be producing. And this is what our bar bending schedule is going to look like. So this is a, a separate PDF that's going to be on Brightspace. And there's a PDF of this drawing on Brightspace as well. So instructions are straightforward enough. So reproduce all text and, and dimensions. So all these, so all the labels here. So you can see all the different labels here, 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 the little section icon here and the dimensions. So these all have to be reproduced as you see them. So again, marks to be awarded for neatness and clarity. So rebar and links. So this is actually your bars along here. These should be drawn in a slightly thicker line weight than the beam outline. So the beam outline is along here, which you can see if you follow my, the mouse. And then the rebar is actually just inside it. So again, the rebar has to be drawn a little bit thicker or a little bit darker shade pencil than the outline just to make it stand out a little bit more. And don't forget the section view over this side. And there's a few bit of commentary here. So again, include this text. So you don't obviously include the instruction text, but include the title, so the front elevation of end beam span and the section AA. As always, complete the title block with all the details and then put in these comments. So the, usually on structural detail drawings, there's always a few comments based on just to help kind of inform the people who are actually going to be reading the drawing. So in this case, we have bar marks identified here and in the commentary. So from bar marks one to six, we're going to use shape code zero zero with nominal cover of 35. So if you look at the drawing, we'll see that bar mark zero one to six. So you can see this, if you go to the last number on these bars, you see it's bar mark zero one. So this is our bar mark zero one. This is bar mark zero two. This is number three, this is number four here, this is the bars here, sorry, and this is number five, and this is number six. So all these bars are using the shape code zero, zero. So I'll go over the shape codes now in a second. And there's a nominal cover of 35 mil. So, so this is usually 35 mil. So especially for the one and two bar, it's 35 mil from the bottom of the bar up to the rebar. Now, usually when you to see structural drawings like this, they're not actually drawn to scale. You can draw it to scale using the scale of one is 20, when I say not drawn to scale, basically if these go on site, they're not to be used by people on site to go with a scaler to position things correctly. They thus for informative purposes to know where the steel is going to go. But for your drawing, for just for drawing it now, you can draw the scale of one to twenty. But again, when you're on site, you're not supposed to take dimensions off these drawings. So you'll see, yes. Yeah, so so the nominal cover here is is we said it was thirty five mil. Um, so I actually did draw this one actually at, with a 35 mil cover, but the other ones are, are not because I slightly offset them a little bit so we can see them a little better. So you can just offset them like as you see here, don't mind the cover, it's not going to be exactly right, but try and get at least a 35 mil for bar marks one and two. It's because you should be able to work that one out. Oops, sorry about that. And then the rest of them, you just kind of align them as you see them here. And again, there's a PDF on Brightspace, you can zoom in and have a bit more detailed look. Um, for bar marks three and six, the bars extend beyond the face of the column 500 millimeters into each span. What that means is, so this is bar marks three, four, five, and six. So it's actually this bar here, this bar here, this bar here, and this bar here. So again, we have a column here and a column here, and this is the beam spanning between them. But you can see the beam actually continues on off. So we actually kind of, it, it goes off into however distance beyond the drawing. Um, but what we instead of actually having the bars going across, so bar mark one and two, 
going all the way across. It generally stops just before it gets to the column because the column itself will have its own reinforcing. And then just to make sure that the bars are connected nicely, there's actually we've stuck in this bar here, this bar here, and the same with this side, this one here and here. That just connects, that just makes sure that the beam is connected to the column. And then because it's only using those bars as opposed to a kind of a complicated cage with links, it just means that it's not going to be interfering with the with the reinforcement that would be in the column. In this drawing, I haven't shown the reinforcement that would be in a column, but you would have something similar like we have in the actual beam, except obviously just be going up in a vertical direction. So you would have links and all different types of bars going up and down. But just for clarity purposes, just to kind of get the hang of it, we just left them out for this drawing. Um, the last bar mark we mentioned here is bar mark seven. So that applies to the links. So you'll see here the links are actually all these little guys here. You'll see along the beam. Again, these are actually holding together almost uh, the top and the bottom bars, and they're actually used then to help kind of you know, reduce the shear, reduce the shear forces in the beam. So if they so just to keep it together, so it doesn't break or crack. And um, so this is going to be using shape code fifty one. So we'll look at that in the second one. Shape code fifty one is and they're closed links with a nominal cover thirty five mil. So again, they're going to be thirty five mil from the base of the concrete and up. So. There are other deductions you can take for when you're putting when you're cutting see but we won't worry about them now just for the moment we'll just work as we have here so again part of this exercise first exercise to do this week is to actually just reproduce this drawing as it is so that's what i would do first of all and then i'll next after this we'll start working through how to actually fill out the bar bending schedule based on the information that we have here so a lot of it is actually just taking the information from the bar marks and dimensions and actually putting it in but there's a few of them we'll have to calculate the length so we'll have a look at the shape you'll see by the shape code what bar, what things have to be calculated some of them are more straightforward than others but we'll have a look so i'll just bring up a shape code no I'll, we'll, we'll start on to the next one actually we'll start completing the bar bending schedule now so we can either pause the video now and then go and complete the drawing and then come back and we'll complete the bar bending schedule and you can follow along with the bar bending schedule as i'm doing it and yeah that's what we'll do okay so Pause the video now if you want to go off and do the drawing, and then we'll come back and do the bar bending schedule. So now we're going to work through the bar bending schedule. So this is going to be a worked example. So just follow along, kind of. If you have the printout of the bar of the bar bending schedule form, you can use that. Um, I might give it in a Word document or an Excel document as well, so you can fill it in if you don't have a printer. So then you can just resubmit it as it is. But we'll work through it now, okay? So again, this is just to go over actual the drawing that you're going to do. This is, this is actually my, the drawing of the, the beam I've done in AutoCAD. And I've actually just color coded the different bars just so we can actually make it a bit clearer to see. So, so I've just turned off the link. So the label up here. So we see all the different bars here. So we have bar mark 01 is the cyan color. Bar mark 02 is the red bar on the top. Three and four and five and six are the two bars connecting the beam through the column onto the span beyond it. And the links are all in the magnetic color along the way. And you can see here actually in the section, the beam or the link is actually the same color. So it's color coded in the magneta. And then the top bars are red like over here and the bottom bars are cyan like there are over here. So again, hope this explains, makes things a little bit better. So usually in a drawing, they're going to be on top of each other. And on yours, it's all going to be the same color with a black pencil. It might be hard to see. So have a look at this video just to see if you make things a little bit clearer for you, hopefully. But again, just draw yourselves in draw it yourselves in black and white just to keep it simple, okay? So here I have a PDF of the, of the bar bending schedule sheet. So this is actually available on Brightspace for everybody. So what we do, we're just going to use, using the information on CAD and the drawing that we're going to actually look at, we're going to actually just start filling this in. So if you have a second screen, that might be handy if you can get a print off your drawing, but I'll kind of switch between the two of them a little bit if, you, if I can do that now in a second. Okay, yeah, so here we go. So we're going to look at, so we'll start off obviously in numerical order. So the first thing we're going to do, we want to actually start logging the information from bar from bar mark 01. So again, this was specified. So we'll see here along the bottom, bar mark 01 actually is 2H, 2H16s, and that's bar mark 01. So the way we're actually going to, Fill that in, I'll bring back to the bar here. So the member here, so I'll just bring up the right pen. So I'm not gonna write in yellow. I'll write in blue so it stands out a little bit. Okay. So in, in member, what we actually write is actually RC beam because that's what we're writing in. RC beam, 
Now I know that's going to get a little bit too big in a second, so that's as small as I can get it. Right. Hopefully we can fit it all in. Okay, so first one, we've already seen beam there. Next now, bar mark is zero, 01. That's actually given on the drawing. So just to show you. So we have there, bar mark zero, 01. The type and size. So again, using the information on the drawing itself. So this is generally all specified. So the type and size, the, st the type is H steel. And the size is 16 mil diameter. So that goes in here. So it's H 16. Oh, sorry, I didn't actually go back. There we go. So I just filled in H 16 here. And then number of members. So there's one because we're really working on one beam at the moment. So then the number of bars in each. So again, if we go back to the AutoCAD drawing, it says here we have it's two H16. So again, the number of number of bars is two. So we can go back. So number in each bar is two. And then the total is basically just the number of bars in each by the number of members. So it's just two again. So the length in each bar. Well, before you look at the length, we'll actually look at the shape code. So in the notes, it says on the drawing, it says a specified shape code of zero, zero. Now, what that means, I'll show you, there's actually a special code, a special document from the British standards that gives shape code. And on that shape code, there's actually different formats for working out the length. So I'll just bring it up now. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, here we go. So this is the shape code. This is taken from, you can get these online because everyone, all the steel fabricators have them on their website. So this is, Basically, shape codes to British Standard 8661 from 2005. So again, these are all little codes you actually use. These are all different type of bars you can actually use when you're putting in reinforcement. So, you know, if, for example, we're going to be looking at another one later on, but say just to pick a random one. So shape code 34. If you were given shape code 34, you then actually look at the length. So you have to kind of work out the length of this. It's actually given the formula. It's A plus B plus C plus E plus 0.5 or minus D. So again, all the information is actually given here. So it says basically what the where the A is, where the B is, where the C is, where the E is. So these would be specified on the drawing, hopefully. And then there's actually you might have to take information this table here. So this is the table of minimum dimension minimum dimensions. Again, we're going to show you how this works. But again, what this is, if there's a bend in your bar, you have to take account of that. So, but we'll do a work example of that in a second. So, but our first bar we did was bar shape code zero zero. Again. Because it's our first time doing this one, I said I keep it nice and simple. So you see here shape code zero zero, where the length is basically just a, which and a is just the length of the bar. So straightforward enough. So let's go back to the document here. So if we think if you if we think about actually what that means, let's go back to the AutoCAD drawing. So we, if you were thinking here, what length would the actual bar be? So, you know, looking at AutoCAD drawing, okay, we see there's five meters here. So if you're thinking five, the, the beam is going to be five meters long and the bar is going to be five meters long, you'd be mistaken. So if you're looking at the drawing here, so the beam, that five meters actually corresponds to the center of this column here, to the center of this column here. Whereas we can see in the drawing that's actually that the beam, that the, the top rebar and the bottom rebar, sorry, with bar mark zero one, actually is a certain distance away from the center of the beam. Now, what the distance is, so for that one to work out, I'll just bring up an extra page here. We can show it. I'll just do some calculations here. Length of bar mark zero one. So it's shape code zero zero. And according to the document, oops, sorry, I'm not actually on my screen. I should really remember to do that. Here we go. So it's length of bar mark zero zero bar mark zero one shape code zero zero and according to the formula the bar is that length and it's basically just the distance of the bar and um, so usually when you're actually designing these beams let's go now we'll go back to the CAD one the engineer will actually specify different types of cover so we have cover, concrete cover here from the bottom of the bar to the top of the rebar or to the underside of the rebar that's your nominal cover there's also going to have to be cover within the concrete so we see here if this, was a, if this was a real drawing here, we'd have lots of more steel detail going up and down the column. So we actually don't want the steel reinforcements from the beam to interfere too much with the column. So that's why we have these actually, these smaller bars here just to kind of join them all together. 
But in order to kind of keep these bars away, there's actually use a specified distance. You'll keep the horizontal reinforcement away from the column reinforcement. And in this case, the engineer has specified that to be 200. So that type of information will be given to you in any examples. So we go back here. So if this has a cover from the column equals 200, and remember that's going to be 200 millimeters each side. Then we can actually work out that the length of that beam is, so it's 5,000, so that's 5,000 millimeters, which is from column to center to column to center to column. And then we know it's going to be minus, and then it's going to be 200 mil on either side. So two by 200. So straightforward enough. We'll take that away, work that out. Simple maths. Again, it's not, the maths isn't hard, it's just knowing what numbers to put in it. So. The actual length of bar mark zero one now is going to be calculated at four six zero zero. So it's just the distance of the, between the two center to center to column to center to column minus the cover for the that's been specified by the engineer. So now if we go back to the bar bending schedule, now we can actually specify the length in here. So we got the length of the bar. It's going to be four six zero zero, and length A. That's the length A that we just had. So again, we just fill it in again, four, six, zero, zero. And now we have the first row of our bar bending schedule complete. And as I said, I kept this one fairly straightforward. So if we go back to the AutoCAD drawing, you see that was the bar along the bottom. The bar along the top is actually the exact same in all detail. So in this case, we can actually just copy the information, but we still have to record it. So back to a bar bending schedule. So again, it's still in the RC beam. Now you have to write this down because if you say if we had actually if we were recording information that was in the column or in different things, you'd have to make sure it's all here. So this is why we're kind of writing everything down just to be sure to be sure, as I say. So it's going to be bar mark zero two, and again same as last time it was H sixteen. Again, this is all specified on the drawing. There's only one beam we're looking at. There's two bars at the front and at the back of the beam. That's two overall, and because it's actually the same calculations before, we don't need to redo it. So it's going to be four six zero zero because shape code was zero zero again, and that a length, that a length was just a four six zero zero. So that was actually going to spend the shape code. So next one now is going to be bar mark zero three. So we'll go back to the drawing. So bar mark zero three, and again this will be another handy one because it's three, four, five, and six are all the exact same. So, so bar mark zero three. So again, there was a note in the there was a note given by the engineer here. So in bar mark zero three to zero six, bars extend beyond face of column five hundred millimeters into each span. So what that means is, so we have our column here. So we know our column is three hundred and fifty mil, and then the engineer specified that the bars are going to be extending from the column 500 mil. So it's going to be 500 mil here and 500 millimeters there. So again, this is a simple mathematics and it's shape code zero, zero. So it's basically just whatever the length of the bar is. That's the length of it. There's no curves or bends we have to take account of. So with this in mind, go back to our calculation page. So length of bar mark zero three again always good to write everything down so we'd be safe because if you're checking everything you want to have all the information there shape code zero zero that's your bar according to the shape code formula all we need to do is actually work out that distance a so in this case we know the column is we said the column was specified at 350 millimeters so I'll just show you again so see here 350 mil so the column is 350 mil there then we have to add on 500 from this side and 500 from this side and then we'll actually have the length of the beam or length sorry the length of the bar so we go back so it's basically just 350 mil plus 500 you can do 500 by 2 or you can just do plus 500 for the same result so it doesn't really make a difference um, 
So yeah, so that 350 mil, that's the clear span. That, that's the width of the column and these are the clear spans specified by the engineer. They're clear spans specified by the engineer and that's the width of the column. So if you work all that out, it comes to one, three, five, oh. So now we've got that. We can actually record that number. So, so yeah, so it's RC beam again, and we're bar mark zero three. Um, it was a H16, so very easy one this throw. Everything is the exact same. So there's two members. Remember, there's going to be one at the front and the back. Just to explain that again. So I don't have it shown here in the section, but you'll see here, that's the lower bar. See, this, this is the base of the front of the beam if you're looking at it, because it's a section. So this is the front, this side, this is the back. So you can see there's one at the front, one at the back. So that's, this, that's for the main bar. But then... If you were if you were to took a section through the column, you'd actually see these two there as well. So let me go back. So where was I? Yes. So the total number of bars is two. The length is which we worked out on the other page, which was given as one three five zero. The shape code was zero zero, and then one three five zero. Now obviously it depends like when we get more information more complicated bars you'd be filling in the kind of the b c d and all the other ones but for the moment we're lucky because everything is nice and straightforward and again because it's even nice easy exercise we're actually bar mark four five and six are all the exact same so we can just fill this in as we go bar mark zero four it's the h16 so it's the exact same now, normally they're not the exact same. I just kept them the exact same for this example, just so we can see the logic behind it. So we get the concept right, and then we can go back and start changing around, because sometimes you might have U bars or other bend or cranked bars, and that's when you know things get changing a little bit. Sometimes the diameters vary depending on the type of loads that are required. Zero, zero, one, three, five, oh. And then we went, that was, was it any more? It was, yeah, number six then. So, so this will probably be the easiest bar shelter when you'll do, but it's, again, proves the point. And again, we're just getting all this information from the structural detailing drawing, that you, the one you're going to reproduce and the one that I've given you. So you're just basically using that drawing to calculate all these and then using the shape code to kind of, to work out what you need to. Three, five, oh. Okay, so we'll just get the next column ready, or the next row ready. So the last one that we're going to look at is the links. So these are these, the on the drawing here, they're the magneto ones going along all across the way. So we'll see that the information for the magneto is up here, for the links is here. So we've actually 24 H807200 links. So how this, what this means is basically 24. So remember 24, that number actually specifies how many there are. So there's 24 links. So you can actually you could actually calculate this out if you, if you didn't know how many there were you could actually work this out. Remember we did this at the one of the previous videos. So just for the we know how long it is, but I'll just do a quick calculation to show you again. So. Number of links equals, remember, was the actual length divided by spacing and then plus one. So in this case, we can take the actual length to be the length of the bar. So if you go back to the drawing, I'm sorry, I'm actually, I didn't see there. I'll just show you what I was doing. Sorry, I was just writing this number of links equals actual length. So number of links equals actual length divided by the spacing plus one. And we'll eventually remember to kind of keep changing over and over. If we go back to the drawing here, you'll see we can take the actual length. For this case, we'll just actually assume it's going to be the, the length of the, either the tension bar or the compression bar at top bottom. So we worked it out in the previous one. So the actual length is four six zero zero then divide that by the spacing which we saw in the drawing we set at 200 and then we add one at the end 
And if your sums are correct, you will get 24, which is actually what we have on the drawing. So you can see this way we can actually, if you weren't given the number 24 in the drawing, you could actually work it out by using the length and the spacing involved or the spacing specified by the engineer. So now we can go back to the bar bending schedule itself. So it's bar mark 07 for the links. And they are a H8. So I'll just show that on the so in the drawing here you can see it's 24, that's the number, and they're H8, so H is type of steel and they're 8 mil bars. So back to here, so they're H8, there's one member, there's one beam, this is 24 links altogether, that means there's going to be 24 in total, and the length we worked out was going to be, the length is actually going to be designated by using another shape code, so we'll open up the shape code box, or the document. So here we have the shape code, according to the structural drawing detail, we're using shape code 51, so if we scroll down on the page, you'll see here, here's shape code 51. So you can see it's a link, and there's different dimensions, there's A, there's B, there's C and D, and the formula is the length is 2 by A plus B plus C minus 2.5 or minus 5D. So again, you're looking at this, you might not be sure what size it is, but Remember we looked at the section, the section view is actually showed this view, show the link almost head on like this. So if we know what the depth of the beam is, which was, I think the depth the dimensions of the beam were 350 tall by 300 wide or 300 deep. So 300 this way, 350 this way. And then we know what the cover of the, of the link is, which was 35 mil. Then we can actually start working out what the, these dimensions are. So let's go back to the drawing board and we'll actually just do that calculation. So we'll just write this down, we'll just write down the information, you know, just keep everything tidy. So we're looking to determine the length of steel for the link. So length of link, hopefully you can understand my writing. So we're using the shape code 51. And the formula is L equals two A plus B plus C in brackets, we'll explain that in a second. That's the first part of it. Minus 2.5 or minus 5D. I'll just do a quick sketch so we can so we know what everything is. So these little hooks here, these are actually just the, the bar when you're folding it in itself at the end. So this is our link. So this is A, this is B, and then just the, the extra tie bits are C and D, which are needed. And I'll just show you, we just drop mark in the beam. So I'll just do the beam in green, just some different color. So the beam will actually be on the outside like this. And remember we talk, and then the cover is going to be 35 mil as specified by the engineer. So now using this information, then we can start populating this formula to work out the length. So L equals two. So A is going to be this distance here. So we know the beam is actually, so the beam is 350 this way. So if we know the cover is going to be 35, so it's going to be 35 up here and 35 down there. So sorry, 35 up here and 35 down there. Then we take that, that's, so that's basically 350 minus 70. So that's going to be 280. We do the same for the B option. So it's going to be 300 and minus 35 cover one side, minus 35 on the other side. So that's going to be 230 mil. 
and now C. So now this is where we're actually going to go back to our shape code ch chart. So now we need to look like, because any, anything that has a little kind of bend in it, we have to kind of revert back to this table here. So this is just a minimum table, a table of minimum dimensions. So if you go to this table here, so we know it's an eight mil bar. So here we have the eight mil bar. And then we want to work out what the OR is. So if it's eight mil bar, we kind of go across to the, so we're looking for C. So in this case, the eight mil, the C is going to be the, this one here, so it's 115. So 115, we close that bracket. And then we're going to go minus, I'm going to get a bit messy here with all the formulas, but sure, it's okay. Let's move this down a little bit so it makes it a bit easier to see everything. Then it's 2.5, and now we have to 2.5 by OR. So again, we go back to this table here. The OR is the radius, so it's not the radius of the bar, it's the radius for scheduling. So again, use the table, we have, it's an eight mil bar. The minimum radius for scheduling is 16. So or in this case is gonna be 16. Then minus five by D. So D is the diameter of the bar, which we know is eight mil, because that was specified. So now we have our formula. So it's two, and then to 280, 230, 115, and then work out the rest of it here. So we'll just do it in stages. So it's going to be six to five within the brackets, minus 40, minus 40 again. So then the length is going to be one, one, seven, oh. So now we have everything here. So it said we used, got the length of the link. So we use shape code 51. That told us to use the formula L equals two, A plus B plus C minus 2.5 or minus 5D. So using the drawing that we had, we knew A was the height of the link and B was the width of the link. We also then knew from the drawing that the height of the beam was 350 high and was 300 wide or 300 deep. So then we were, able to, we were given cover on the drawing as well. So we just take the cover away from the beam dimensions. That'll give us the A and B for the actual link. So we put those numbers into the formula. The 115 comes from the table on the bar shape code chart. So that was the minimal, min, minimum end projection. And then the 16, that was that was the minimum radius for scheduling again for the on the bar shape code chart. So that was the minimum radius for an eight mil bar. And then the D was the eight mil diameter of the bar. So then we put the numbers in and we get 1170. So now we can go back to our bar chart, our, our bar schedule. So we've already filled in the seven, the H8. So now we've got the length. So after all that little, that little, it was now it was a fairly, very simple actual mathematical bit of maths, but it was just, the issue was based just finding the information and knowing where the information was. So once you get the hang of that, it's really, really very simple. So the length where we worked out to be 1170 and the shape code was 51. So now it's here, it's asking us for those dimensions that we had, we worked out in. So remember we worked out A, so once we got A and basically got the depth of beam and using the formula and took away the cover, A was 280, B was 230, and C was 115, and we didn't actually calculate D, but I think in this case, usually in this case, usually in this situation, D is actually the same as same as C. So for those links, they always usually are, and we have no E and R. So that's basically our bar schedule fully complete based on the AutoCAD drawing that we were working on. So go back here. You'll see now we've actually we've actually got all the information we need. So we've got all the bars. So we've got there's six, the seven bar marks. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six in six of these bars, and then well, not six of these bar marks, and then all the links. That's our seven. So we have the seven on the bar on the bar schedule. So let's go back here. So now once we, once you've all this information, now we've actually completed the bar schedule for that beam that you had to draw. So straightforward, simple enough. So what I want you guys to do is basically you can follow along and just fill in the chart. So once you've completed the drawing. The, the drawing and the structural detailing. 
want you to actually just follow along. You can fill in the chart as you're going along. So basically just watch the video, work along it with me as, you go, as you're doing it and fill it in. Don't just look at the end of the video and copy it in. Just do the calculations and write out the calculations. Calculations that I did, I want you to submit them as well. So you can just put them on a blank sheet of paper and scan them. And um, for this, for the actual bar schedule, there's a P, I'll put a PDF and an Excel file or a Word document file. So we can either print it off and fill it out by hand, or you can type it in if it's a Word or Excel file, see what I can put up there. So I want you to submit the bar schedule filled in and then show the, some of the, show the calculations that I did in the video as well. So just to show that you actually worked it out yourselves. And that's the drawing and the bar schedule and those calculations will be the uh, submission for this exercise. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense to you. And yeah, we'll be doing something similar with a foundation in our next exercise. So next week you'll be working on the isometric drawing of this beam. So again, we'll, we'll go in more detail with that next week. But any other questions, just let me know, usual story, let me know, and I will help you out as best I can. Okay, thank you.